In this video, we're going to learn about the uterine cycle. So, so far you've learned about the ovarian cycle, where days one through 14 are the follicular phase, where the follicles are just kicking out lots of estrogen and enlarging. Day 14 was ovulation, and then until day 28 after that is the luteal phase because the corpus luteum takes over um, and produces massive amounts of progesterone. All right, so in the uterine phase, day one is the start of the menstrual period, okay? So day one, no matter where you are, is determined by this day that you start your period, not the day it was due to start, but the day it actually starts. So the first five days, what is happening is the functional layer of the uterus is sloughing as shown in this diagram where you see it getting smaller and smaller. And so days one through five are called the menstrual phase. And it doesn't really matter if your period only lasts three days or if it lasts seven days. By convention, the cycles are made to be 28 days, even though we know the vast majority of women, like 85% plus, don't have 28 day cycles, they're either shorter or longer. We also say that the periods last for five days. And the reason why you are sloughing your functional layer is because of the plummeting levels of estrogen and progesterone, because remember, corpus luteum went on strike. All right, so after five days, what you see is the endometrium building itself back up. And so you have increased blood vessels in that area. Now, if you go back and you think about the ovarian phase, what's happening here is the follicular part where you are kicking out more and more estrogen. So days five through 14 are called the proliferative phase, and this is purely an estrogen effect. Now, day 14 is when ovulation occurred. And remember, after ovulation, we now have a corpus luteum. Not only do we have estrogen, but now we have a corpus luteum giving us progesterone. And so that changes what's going on in the endometrium and that the glands become very torturous and we get this super rich blood supply, which, so this is called the secretory phase. Um, and this is solely due to a progesterone effect from days 15 to 28. So looking at how the endometrium looks in the various phases, um, in the proliferative phase, which is remember which days? That's right. This is when the endometrium is thickening more. We are rebuilding the functional layer. We start at the end of your period with less than half a millimeter of endometrium left behind. And by the end of the proliferative phase, it has more than quadrupled in thickness. It's now two to three millimeters in size. Now, the increase of estrogen being produced by the ovary, which is causing this proliferative phase, actually increases progesterone receptors on those endometrial cells. So when you look at the endometrium at the beginning, you can see very simple tubular glands with some compact stroma and very short, straight, narrow glands. Later on in the proliferative, you can see that the glands have gotten a little bit bigger, but there's nothing super vascular going on in this time. In contrast, in the secretory phase, we are going to continue the thickness, but not quadruple it in size, maybe another 50 to 100%. And at this time, what happens is the, we, we end up with what we call a wet, nutritious bed. So we've had fluid secretion, so the stroma looks very spacey because it's accumulated. When we look at the glands, I think you can see the difference in the glands on this picture. If not, flip back and forth on your handout where now they're not nearly as straight, but they're very coiled looking. And when we look, we can see lots of secretions in these glands. See all this pink stuff? That wasn't there in the proliferative phase. And we also have a bunch of spiral arteries. 
So here's what it kind of looks like, where you can see all the fluid accumulation near the surface right before the menstrual period. So remember, for about 10 days after ovulation, the corpus luteum is kicking out lots and lots of progesterone. And then if there's no pregnancy, no HCG, it shuts off and progesterone levels plummet. That plummeting and progesterone, well, not only is there no progesterone to attach to the progesterone receptors to continue this fluid secretion, but it also, that loss of progesterone causes the arteries, the little ar arteries in the arterioles, I guess they would be, in the endometrium to undergo spasm. And so when they undergo spasm, they're narrowing and there's less blood supply. And so these cells don't have the nutrition they need. And so it starts dying off, starts degenerating, blood accumulates there. And then that is why sloughing occurs during the menstrual phase. So the menstrual phase, at times it looks like maybe you're losing a cup of blood, but in reality, it's usually closer to about 40 milliliters, okay. which is um, at plus an additional, almost the same amount in the serous fluid. So all together, you know, a little bit less than 100 milliliters of fluid, which comes up to about a quarter cup totally spread out over the days. So that functional layer, the stratum functionalis is totally shed. And not only do you see all the blood vessels with their blood stuck in them from spasm, but you also, if you look closely, will see an inundation of inflammatory cells because this is dying tissue. And so whatever blood is there, the white blood cells in the blood vessel will undergo diaphagesis and try to um, do phagocytosis of the dying cells. So, on heavy days where you have increase in blood loss, then there's no time for the blood to clot in the tissue before it gets sloughed. And on those days, you can see what look like pretty large and grotesque clots on pads, on your tampons, and the toilet. Okay. But if, um, especially if the blood is pooling in the vagina with a tampon in there. When you pull the tampon out, that's when you'll see blood clots. So at this point, I've kind of made a super simple table, put day 14 as ovulation, and um, I want you to review both the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle as far as their phases and know what days are what. And then come to this slide and put it all together. Where at the top, I have the names of the ovarian cycles. At the bottom, I have the names of the uterine cycles. And in the middle, I have the four hormones. So make sure you can put it all together. Don't do ovarian, then uterine. Just start at day one. Here's what's happening at day one. Like, for instance, we have plummeted our levels of progesterone and estrogen. And so we have started the menstrual phase, blah, blah, blah. I continue on like that. Um, and then take this, if you're having trouble with that, you can come to this picture because this picture actually gives you hints because this picture actually shows what's happening to the ovary and shows what's happening to the endometrium. So do it on this picture first and then if you can't figure it out, go back and try to do it on this picture. All right. So that's it for this section, and I will see you shortly as we continue our exploration of the female reproductive system. Thank you, and ask questions on this.